Algebra 2. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Um, today we are moving on to 4.2.1, which um, is about inverses of um, functions and relations. Okay. Um, so the reason I use the term relations as well as functions is sometimes you might start with a function and the inverse of that function is not a function. Or you start with something that's not a function, but the inverse is. So um, we call things that are like relationships between variables, we call them relations. Um, but if they are specifically a function, which remember is if it passes the vertical line test, right, there's no, you can't have more than two, more than one y uh, value for every x value. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, inverses and what they are and, you know, how to find them and all that fun stuff. Um, so our so back for today is graph and recognize inverses of relations and functions, then algebraically find the inverse of a function and determine if two, oh, I didn't, clearly didn't finish the sentence there, um, determine if two functions are inverses of each other. Okay, so in theory, we have already done the 4-2 technology lab in the book. Um, but if you're watching this and you haven't done that yet, um, basically what you learn from the tech lab is that um, the, the inverse of a function or the inverse of a graph is a reflection over the line y equals x. Okay, so if, um, and, the, and the line y equals x, right, is a straight diagonal line. Um, it goes through 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, right? Negative 1, negative 1. That's the line y equals x, okay? And so um, if you have a function up here, hello, or a graph or something, right? Its inverse is a reflection over the line y equals x. So, um, you know, if I, I don't know, have an orange slice here or something, I don't know. It's not an orange slice maybe a potato, then its reflection, or its inverse, is going to be a reflection over that line y equals x, okay? Um, and so if we actually have a function, say for example, um, a line um, 2x plus 1, right? If you want to graph that, and you can graph its inverse by reflecting it over the line y equals x. Okay, so there's y equals 2x plus 1. Um, right, has a y-intercept of 1 and a slope of 2. Um, and then the black is the y, the line y equals x. So you have to reflect, in order to get the inverse, you have to reflect the pink line over the black line. And what you end up getting is something like this, right, a line kind of like the purple. Okay, it's not perfect because I don't have a straight edge with me, but um, that's the idea. Okay, so then this would be the inverse of the pink. Okay, so we're going to be um, talking about notation and graphing and all those sorts of fun things. Um, but something that I want you to um, think about here for a second um, is how do the points of the inverse relate to the points of the original graph or the original function. Um, and so if you look at here, we have the point 0, 1, okay? And then here we have the point z uh, 1, 3, and then 2, 5, and then 3, 7, okay? Um, and the inverse, mine's not perfect, but um, the inverse should go through opposite, like the x and the y's are switched. So if this goes through the point 0, 1, then this, then the inverse should go through the point 1, 0. And this point that was 1, 3 is now 3, 1. Okay, again, my graph's not perfect, but I'll switch those points so that it makes more sense. So there you go. So 0, 1 turns into 1, 0. 1, 3 turns into 3, 1. 2, 5 turns into 5, 2. Note that like the signs don't change. It doesn't change to like a negative and a positive or something like that. It only switches the X and the Y. The zero, one turns into one zero, okay? 
Okay, so I'd like you to try this next problem. So graph f of x equals square root of x. Okay, it's so a regular square root parent function. And then I want you to graph its inverse, okay, using the same, like the reflecting over the, um, the line y equals x. So go ahead, try that, and check your answer. Okay, so there you have it. Um, the pink is the original function, f of x, and then the purple is the inverse. So there's actually notation that's kind of important. So if... This is important. If the inverse is a function and the original is a function, then there's this notation. Um, so if f of x is my original function, the, um, the inverse is denoted as f to the negative 1 of x. Okay. So it's kind of like the negative 1 is an exponent. It looks like an exponent. Um, but you wouldn't say f to the negative 1, like I just said, right? That's not actually what it is. It's not raising the function to the power negative 1. It's just notation. So all that means is f inverse, f inverse, okay, is a function of x. Okay, so next thing I'd like you to try is tell me what is the domain and range of f of x, right? We're still looking at this problem here, okay? What is the domain and range of f of x? And what is the domain and range of f inverse? Okay, go ahead and try that real quick. Okay, so you should have gotten that the, both the domain and range for both functions is 0 to infinity. Okay, so uh, your domain is 0 to infinity for f of x and also 0 to infinity um, in the y direction for your range. And then same thing for f inverse. Okay. Um, and so this wasn't a great example, but actually what, what ends up happening with the domain and range is because your x's and y's switch, so do your domain and range. So if your domain is 1 to infinity, then the range of your inverse should be 1 to infinity. Okay, So you just like swap your domain and range for the inverse and the function. Okay, so the domain of f of x is the range of f inverse, and the range of f of x is the domain of f inverse. So they just swap. Um, uh, tables, just because, so it's really clear on a table as well, because all of your x values and your y values switch. Um, so you could, if you wanted to figure out the graph of an inverse, you can graph x and y for the function, and then just swap them for the inverse, okay, to make the graph of the inverse. So that's kind of nifty. Okay, so similarly, algebraically, guess what? How do you get the inverse, algebraic inverse, of a function? Well, everything's all about switching x's and y's, right? The domain becomes the range, and the range becomes the domain, and you switch your x's and your y's and swap them and make a new table and your graph, all your points swap. So it's actually exactly the same with the algebraic notation. So um, if I start out with a function y equals 3x minus 1, in order to get the inverse, I change the y to an x. I swap the x and the y, right? Change the y to an x, change the x to a y, and then I solve algebraically to figure out what y is. Okay, so I'll show you what that looks like in the next example. If you think you understand what I mean by that, you can go ahead and try that for example one. Okay, so um, there's kind of your definition or the process, the general process. So um, for the example, finding inverse of y, which is 3x minus 1. So the first step you want to do is switch your x and your y. So you should get x equals 3y minus 1. And then we just want to solve for y. So you add 1 to the other side, right? And you get x plus 1 equals 3y. And then to get y alone, you just want to solve, um, divide by 3. So divide by 3, and you get y. Um, so y equals um, x plus 1 over 3. And if we want it in um, a way that makes sense to us, we can like distribute the divided by 3. So that would be y equals 1 third x plus 1 third. So the inverse of y equals 3x minus 1 is 1 third x plus a third. So it's another line, 
just with a different slope and a different y-intercept. Okay, so go ahead, try uh, the second example and check your answer. Okay, so the inverse of x cubed minus 2 is the cube root of x plus 2, um, which you can just solve the same way that we solved the last one as well. Um, okay, so the next couple examples are graphing. Um, so this first one is graph 4x minus 5, and then write the inverse and graph it on the same coordinate plane. That one you can just do using the graph and like visually reflect it. Um, but the second one, I want you to try to use a table. Um, so I'm going to write it out and then kind of explain my answer. Um, and uh, But yeah, you should go ahead and try both of those. Okay, so here's the answer to number one. f of x is the purple, and then f inverse is the uh, pink. So you just um, flip it over the line, y equals x. Um, so that's what the black is there. Um, and then for the second one, um, the original, so I made a table. So when x is negative 2, y is 5, negative 1, 2, 0, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 5. Those are the points for f of x. So to get the points for the inverse, I just want to switch x and y. So the inverse points are going to be 5 comma negative 2 rather than negative 2, 5. And then 2 comma negative 1 instead of negative 1, 2. So you see what I'm doing there? I'm just like switching what my x's and my y's are. Okay. Um, and then I can graph it. And so the pink there is my inverse. Be careful with terminology though because this is not look at, you know, and then the question says, is the inverse a function? And the original is, right, it's a parabola, but the second one is a parabola turned on its side. And that doesn't pass the vertical line test, um, so it's not a function. So you kind of want to be careful about that. Um, cool. Okay, so our summary of inverses is that um, the points swap. So xy turns into yx. Um, if you s just switch x and y, do you have a function or a relation? Well, we don't actually um, know. It kind of depends on which, uh, what your graph is or what, you know, what the relationship is to begin with. Okay, the domain and range of a function swap for the, the inverse. So if the domain um, of the function is 1 to infinity, then the range of the inverse will be the range of the inverse, not the domain. The range of the inverse will be 1 to infinity. The graph is a reflection over the line y equals x. And this is something I didn't mention um, in the beginning, but inverses actually undo each other. So like a square and a square root, those undo each other. Um, so there will be some sort of a square in the inverse of a square root and vice versa. Um, so that's kind of nifty. Inverses should undo each other. Algebraically, to find the inverse, we swap x and y and then solve for y. And then the notation is that if both things are a function, you can do f of x and f to the negative 1 of x um, to, to notate the inverse. And that's it for today. Cool. So good luck, and I'll see you later.